Hello everyone, myself Dr. Madhuri. I'll be taking amphibian practical on topic frog's heart. So what we are going to discuss under this topic is study of frog's normal cardiogram and effect of temperature on cardiogram. Then effect of stenous ligature on frog's heart and properties of cardiac muscle. Before we go in detail on this topic, let's see what is the difference between amphibian heart and mammalian heart. In amphibian heart, pacemaker is sinus venosus, whereas in mammalian heart, pacemaker is SA node, that is sinoatrial node. Pacemaker is nothing but it is the one which generates impulses. In amphibian heart, there are three chambers those are two atrias and one ventricle whereas in mammalian heart we have four chambers those are two auricles and two ventricles now in amphibian heart the blood which has been pumped is mixed blood that is oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in mammalian heart the blood which has been pumped is oxygenated blood from left ventricle in amphibian heart the nutrition is received by blood which is going through the chamber Whereas in mammalian heart, it is received by coronary vessels. These coronary vessels are absent in amphibian heart. Conducting tissues are absent in amphibian heart, whereas it is present in mammalian heart. In amphibian heart, normal heart rate is between 30 to 50 beats per minute, whereas in mammalian heart, it is 60 to 100 beats per minute. Crescent line. It is a line which is present between sinus venosus and auricles. It is present in amphibian heart whereas it is absent in mammalian heart. Now this is a slide where I have shown anterior and posterior view of frog's heart. So now this is a picture A. So picture A is the one where I have shown posterior view. That is nothing but dorsal view. So picture A shows posterior view or dorsal view of frog's heart. And picture B, this is ventral view. It is nothing but anterior view. So ventral view or anterior view of frog's heart. Now in this picture A, this is sinus venosus. As I said, sinus venosus is pacemaker in frog's heart. These two are auricles and this is ventricle right now in picture b that is anterior view or ventral view we can see definitely two auricles and ventricles and this is truncus arteriosus which gives aortic trunks so this is about frog's heart anterior and posterior view in the next slide i have uploaded a video where it has been shown auricles ventricle, sinus venosus and uh, truncus arteriosus. So let's see in the next slide. If this is the anterior structure, if you see the anterior structure, this orange is, orange is, this orange is this the orange is right, the auricle. right auricle, this yellow is the left auricle, the red part, this red part is the ventricle, and you see there is a blue line. This is the bulbous arteriosus. And on the posterior surface, you can see a green color. This is the sinus venosus. Now you see in the junction, if you pick up the sinus venosus, in the junction of the sinus venosus and the auricle, there is a white line. Okay. Now that white line is important because there is the presence of the vagal ganglia. Now what is cardiogram, right? So cardiogram is nothing but recording of mechanical activity of the heart. Recording of electrical activity of heart is known as electrocardiogram and recording of mechanical activity of heart is cardiogram. Now let's see the procedure, okay? Here I have given a steps of procedure and in the next slide, I have uh, showed you the video that how do we record Prox cardiogram. First, 
there is stunning and pithing of the frog so we first stun the frog and then we pit the frog okay so what is stunning so that is making frog unconscious we hold the frog in our hand and then we hit a blow on the head of the frog and then we make the frog unconscious and then we use pithing needle so you can see in this picture pithing needle is being inserted right so with the usage of pithing needle we insert it into the through the skin muscle and bone tissue and we uh, to the and we damage a brain in spinal cord so this is pithing of the frog then you have to give midline incision in pith frog through the skin over the sternum right so this is a picture where it has been shown midline incision is given okay in the pith frog through the skin over the sternum then we open the pericardium and remove the heart then we have to lift up the ventricle so that the apex of the heart can be tied with the thread to the sterling's heart lever so this you can see here so this is apex of uh, heart basically the ventricle which has been lifted up with the thread to the sterling's heart lever so this is sterling's heart lever and this is actually heart of frog then touch the writing point of heart lever lightly to the smoke paper on the drum so here you can see then you have to record the cardiogram so this is this like arrow you can see so that is writing point of heart lever so you have to touch it on smoke paper which is there on the uh, drum right and then uh, you have to record a cardiogram so drum will move with particular speed and the cardiogram will get recorded so this entire procedure i have i have put in the next slide with video mountain of the frog heart preparation the isolated frog heart preparation is mounted on the frog board the hook is attached by a piece of cotton to a transducer suspended vertically above the heart It is essential to keep the preparation moist at all times during the experiment by dripping physiological salt solution onto the surface of the hat. Drugs can be applied in a similar fashion by dripping solutions directly onto the hat using a Pasteur pipette. So now, uh, cardiogram of frog's heart, right? So as I showed you in the previous video that uh, cardio, uh, cardiogram of the frog was recorded on uh, drum, right? So how actually it looks? So it looks uh, as it has been shown here in this picture. That is, you can see here upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke and downstroke, right? So this upstroke is because of contraction of sinus venous. And downstroke is relaxation of sinus venosus. Then again, upstroke is because of contraction of atria. And then downstroke is because of relaxation of atria. Then this upstroke is because of contraction of ventricle. And downstroke is because of relaxation of ventricle. So S is activity of sinus venosus. A is activity of atria. And V is activity of the ventricle. Ideally, when we are recording the frog's cardiogram, on drum with speed of 1.2 mm per second we get this diagram this cardiogram but sometimes what happens if the liver is not sens so sensitive this activity we may not get 
so directly we get from activity of atria and ventricle so in our journal the diagram which we have given is this that is atrial activity and ventricular activity two activities we have given in cardiogram so do not get confused with this diagram and this diagram so it is a same diagram but only here in this picture we have not given activity of sinus venosus because all the time we are not getting this activity when we are recording it okay so uh, this is also a frox cardiogram right this upstroke downstroke upstroke downstroke so this is upstroke is contraction of atria this downstroke is relaxation of atria this upstroke is contraction of ventricle and this is relaxation of ventricle so this is normal cardiogram of frox heart effect of temperature on frox heart so under this topic we will see effect of warm temperature and effect of cold temperature so warm temperature that we are using warm ringer solution with temperature of 40 degree celsius so when uh, we are pouring this warm ringer solution on frox heart and the recording a cardiogram the cardiogram which you will get is this normal cardiogram which we are recording is by using a ringer solution of 25 degree celsius so that is this this is normal cardiogram okay but when we are using warm ringer solution the cardiogram which we are getting is this so let's see what is the difference right what changes we are getting by increasing temperature on frog's heart so that is because of warm solution warm ringer solution there is increase in heart rate and increase in force of contraction okay so there is increase in heart rate and increase in force of contraction how do we come to know in the graph that heart rate and force of contraction have increased so let's see for example think that this cardiogram this is normal cardiogram which is recorded in 5 second right so how many heart rate are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 okay here when you count this is 7 so definitely heart rate have increased right plus you also see that the width here see the width here and see the width here so the width has reduced right and then see the height and see the height here definitely here on warm saline the height has increased right so as i said in previous slide what this upstroke and downstroke means this upstroke is contraction of atria downstroke is relaxation of atria this upstroke is contraction of ventricle and this is relaxation of ventricle so here you can see the upstroke and downstroke so basically this height has increased and that shows that the force of contraction has increased okay and here the width has reduced that shows that heart rate have increased right so the effect of warm ringer solution on frog's heart is there is increase in heart rate and increase in force of contraction now you might get a question that why there is increase in heart rate and why there is increase in force of contraction so heart rate is increased because of effect of warm ringer solution on sinus venosus so because of the uh, warm solution effect on sinus venosus there is increase in heart rate and force of contraction has increased because because warm ringer solution Uh, because of the warm ringer solution basically because of increased temperature okay because of increased temperature there is increased enzymatic activity and decrease in viscosity so there is increase in force of contraction okay so enzymatic activity of myocardium is getting increased because of increased temperature okay so now let's see the next slide here we have i have uplo uh, i have uh, put regarding cold ringer solution having temperature of 15 degree celsius 
okay normal ringer solution is 25 degree celsius warm is 40 degree and cold is 15 degree celsius okay so here this is the graph which you will get by cold ringer solution so this is normal cardiogram and this is a cardiogram which you get after cold ringer solution that is after decreasing the temperature on frog side okay so here as exactly opposite to the warm ringer solution here uh, amplitude means height has decreased you can see here as compared to this normal cardiogram so definitely force of contraction have decreased and width you can see here see the width and see here the width width has increased okay so definitely heart rate have decreased okay so this is effect of cold ringer solution that is decreased temperature on frog's heart that decreased temperature causes decrease in heart rate and decrease in force of contraction again the reason behind decrease in heart rate is the effect of uh, decreased temperature on sinus venosis that decreases the generation of impulses okay so decrease in heart rate and one more is there is a decrease in force of contraction is because of decrease enzymatic activity of myocardium so as a result there is increased viscosity and that is why there is decrease in force of contraction okay so now in exam how the question can be asked from this uh, graphs okay like uh, what is today's topic basically so they can give you the particular graph okay they can give you any graph normal cardiogram or warm ringer solution or cold ringer solution anyway and they can ask you to identify the graph and sub question can be anything maybe comment on it or any sub question can be asked okay now you might get a question that why should we know about frog's cardiogram okay so the knowledge is important just to correlate the finding in human okay so as we got to see that when we are changing a temperature and recording a cardiogram the heart rate and force of contraction gets changed right so same way in humans when there is increase in temperature in conditions like fever for example or in case of exercise where our body temperature is increasing so what happens there is increase in heart rate so this finding we can correlate now second question you might get why frog's heart we are using right so that is because frog's heart continuously beat even after opening of the chest okay and second is the rate is very slow so that what happens is we can observe the sequences whatever is occurring we can observe the changes okay so that is why we are using frog's heart now effect of stenous ligatures on frog's heart now how this name stenous ligatures have come so that is from scientist name that was Hermann Friedrich Stenius. so he did experiment on frog's heart by applying the ligatures and he found out that what is the effect coming on cardiogram so what happens is let's see he uh, experiment uh, did experiment on frog's heart by applying uh, ligatures between sinus venosis and auricles right so you can see this ligature which has been applied between two part right so now as i said that sinus venosis is actually a pacemaker of frog's heart means it is generating impulse now because we applied ligature the impulse could not go from sinus venosis to auricles so what happened this atria stopped beating for some time atria and ventricle they stopped beating for some time and then what happened one of the property of frog's heart that is autorhythmicity what is autorhythmicity that is ability to generate its own impulse so because of the property of autorhythmicity the atria started generating impulse by itself okay so the what graph we got is this see what i have uh, shown you here you can see this is normal cardiogram upstroke downstroke upstroke downstroke upstroke downstroke right 
so this upstroke is because of atrial contraction small downstroke is because of atrial relaxation then this is ventricular contraction and this is ventricular relaxation right so this is normal cardiogram now as we applied ligature between sinus venosus and auricle right so what happened impulse was generating right by uh, sinus venosus but it was not able to go to atria right so what happened the sinus rhythm you can see it is normal this is sinus venosus rhythm right sinus rhythm okay but atria stopped beating for some time right so impulse uh, this is sinus rhythm only right it was stopped uh, sorry atria was stopped right so here you are not getting any atrioventricular rhythm but after some time of application of ligature right you applied ligature here and after some times of application of ligature you are getting atrioventricular rhythm then again sinus venosus rhythm then again atrioventricular then again sinus venosus then again atrioventricular right so you can see normal sinus rhythm but atrioventricular rhythm is very less right this is atrioventricular this is sinus rhythm this is atrioventricular right so this is the effect of applying first ligature on frog's heart so what i have written here on applying first ligature the atria and ventricles stop beating for some time right then sinus venosus beat at its original rate while atria and ventricle together beats at lower rate so you can see here sinus venosus is beating at original rate but the atria and ventricle is at lower rate right let's see the next slide now what he did he applied second ligature between atria and ventricle right then what happened this ventricle stopped beating for some time because impulse could not go from auricle to ventricle right so ventricle stop beating for some time but then after some time it start beating by generating its own impulse right so let's see what we got the graph was like this see we applied second ligature between auricle and ventricle now what happened here there is sinus rhythm then this is atrial rhythm then sinus rhythm then atrial rhythm then sinus rhythm and then we got ventricular rhythm basically for some time ventricle stop beating okay but sinus rhythm and atrial rhythm we got to see okay but after some time of application of second ligature okay we got ventricular rhythm because of property of autorhythmicity okay so what we got to see is sinus venosus uh, is beating in normal way means sinus rhythm is coming normal but Uh, auricles are beating at slower rate and ventricles are beating at even slower rate you can see here see this is sinus rhythm then this is atrial sinus atrial sinus then ventricular then sinus atrial sinus rhythm then atrial rhythm sinus then ventricular so 1 2 3 4 here and 5 atrial then so many are sinus rhythm okay and ventricular is 2 so sinus is, uh, venosus uh, uh, rhythm is coming normal but auricle is getting slower and the ventricle rhythm is getting even more slower okay so basically what we got to see is the sinus venosus is actually pacemaker of heart and the other chambers are following sinus venosus that is they are following pacemaker of heart other chambers okay and even we have uh, put a ligature between particular two part of heart even then heart could generate its own impulse okay that is heart has property of autorhythmicity that is to generate its own impulse so that is what we got to see by applying stainless ligature on frog's heart so on applying second ligature that is here ventricle stop beating for some time as i said then ventricle start beating at slower rate and now the sinus beats at original rhythm atria beating at slower rate and ventricles are beating at even slower rate that you can see in this graph so this shows that 
so this shows that each of the heart chambers are capable of generating its own rhythm though normally it follows the pacemaker as i said that heart chambers are actually following pacemaker but even though they are following pacemaker when impulse are not coming what happens is they are able to generate its own impulse okay so here we will see the final picture what i explained in previous two slide that this is normal cardiogram then we applied first ligature between sinus venosus and atria and then what we got is sinus rhythm and atria and ventricle stops beating for some time then we got atrioventricular rhythm sinus rhythm atrioventricular rhythm sinus rhythm and then we applied second ligature between atria and ventricle then what we got is ventricle stop beating for some time okay then sinus rhythm was there atrial rhythm was there sinus rhythm was there atrial rhythm was there then we got ventricular rhythm okay so sinus rhythm was normal but then atrial rhythm was at slower rate and ventricular rhythm was at even slower rate so by doing this experiment the property of cardiac muscle to generate its own rhythm and the whole heart normally follows a pacemaker could be demonstrated by applying strenuous ligature and its effect on frog's heart okay okay now let's see properties of cardiac muscle so we will see one by one first let's know the name that is first one is long refractory period then allerman low then staircase phenomena then summation of stimuli and extra systole with compensatory pause now uh, first four properties which i have written here this we uh, do in stenius heart that is uh, quiescent heart okay but this last property extra systole with compensatory pause we experiment on beating heart okay so let's see now let's see properties that is long refractory period okay as name suggest long refractory period what do we mean by refractory period so that is period where heart do not give response so it is unresponsive state to the stimulus okay so there are uh, i have uploaded one picture let's see that see this is actually action potential of heart okay so this is action potential of heart it is electrical activity and this is uh, mechanical activity okay so this is mechanical activity right latent period contraction period relaxation period okay so now as i said you absolute refractory period and relative refractory period okay so these are the two types of refractory period so this yellow color which you are seeing okay entire thing is absolute refractory period what do we mean by absolute refractory period absolute refractory period is nothing but it is a refractory period where the heart is absolutely refractory means it do not give response to the stimulus at all no matter how strong and how long stimulus we are giving but relative refractory period is the period where heart gives a response when the strength of stimulus is increased right so this is difference between arp and rrp okay now why should you know this see that is because uh because of long absolute refractory period okay see here one of the property i am saying it is long refractory period so because this refractory period is of 250 millisecond okay and because of this because of this heart cannot get tetanized because of this long refractory period okay uh, during this period if you give second stimulus to the heart it will definitely not respond at all and that is why heart cannot get tetanized okay now let's see the next so when you want to uh, correlate with this uh, with this action potential this mechanical activity so this is absolute refractory period is from 0 to this phase 3 and this relative refractory period is phase 3 to phase 4 okay now a second stimulus which is applied 
either first half of or a second half of latent period or contraction period it fails to produce any response providing that whole latent period is absolutely refractory another stimulus now see uh, this is the picture where this entire picture is the one which is showing you that first we are giving single stimulus to the heart and the response we are achieving and then immediately the second stimulus this four diagram is of second stimulus so second stimulus we are giving and during different phase of uh, mechanical activity to, of, of heart okay so that is second stimulus is given during relaxation period this is a picture then during uh, sorry this is after relaxation period this is during relaxation period this is during latent period and this is during contraction period now what is happening the result we will see so first picture is of single stimulus so this is a arrow right single stimulus is given and this is what we got the graph right now what we did the second stimulus on this only we are giving second stimulus right so this is first stimulus and we got this now we gave second stimulus so this is second stimulus this is after relaxation period so second stimulus is after relaxation period so this is contraction this is relaxation so in after relaxation period the second stimulus we are giving so this is what we got right means we are getting a response from heart so why the height is slightly increased here it is because of beneficial effect because some immediately after relaxation period we are giving stimulus so what happens is some amount of calcium would have been present of previous stimulus and that is why slightly height is increased now second stimulus we are giving during relaxation period this was after relaxation so that is why here now this second stimulus we are giving during so before ending down only we are giving so this is what the response we get right now in this picture they have given during latent period so what is latent period lp is latent period so latent period is nothing but it is a period between stimulus and initiation of contraction right so when we are giving second stimulus during latent period this is latent period so when we are giving stimulus during latent period what happens is there is no response heart will not give any response okay and then this is a picture where during contraction phase okay during contraction phase if you are giving a stimulus so this is second stimulus which is given during contraction phase you are not getting any response so what we got to see is during and after so this is after relaxation period this is during relaxation period so during and after relaxation period the stimulus which is given to heart that will produce response but in other phases during latent period or during contraction period okay if you give it will not produce any response okay and that is because of long refractory period okay now next property that is all or none low as name suggest all or none right so all means it gives response and none means it do not give response right so let's see what this is so what i have written here with a single inadequate stimulus the ventricle does not respond at all what do we mean by this sentence that is when stimulus to the heart is given that is inadequate means if it is given sub threshold stimulus okay below threshold level when we give stimulus the ventricle do not respond at all no matter how long time you give okay then let's read next sentence at the same time if the stimulus produces a response irrespective of whether it is of minimal sub maximal maximal or supra maximal strength the extent of response of ventricle remains the same what do we mean by this sentence is when the heart is stimulated with threshold or supra threshold response okay so those are minimal sub maximal maximal or supra maximal strength the response which you get from heart is the same right so let's see the diagram see this is a picture where none phase and all phase is shown okay none means when you have given stimulus sub threshold 
okay so this is sub threshold stimulus okay where you do not get any response you can see there is no response at all but when we give threshold and supra threshold response uh, sorry stimulus okay this is minimal stimulus sub maximal maximal and supra maximal these are the stimulus which we are giving this is response which we are getting right so response is same okay uh, that is a all or none law now you might get a question that what is this written in centimeter right so that is nothing but it is distance between primary and secondary coil it has been already taught in introduction class of amphibian lab right so this centimeters which are written is distance between primary and secondary coil uh, so distance is between primary and secondary coil is inversely proportional to the strength of stimulus means if the distance is more the strength of stimulus is less and if distance is less the strength of stimulus which is given to the heart is more now you can see here it is 18 cm means distance is 18 cm whereas from 18 here all are slowly decreasing right so what i said distance and strength of stimulus is inversely proportional so here the distance is slowly getting decrease means from here when you go this side the strength of stimulus is slowly getting increased and that is why as you are increasing strength of stimulus you are getting response that is from here onwards we are giving threshold stimulus and the response is what we are getting but this is sub threshold okay so here we are not getting response so this is all or none law next property is staircase phenomena or trepe okay t r e p p e now what this says is if the quiescent heart is stimulated five to six successive stimuli means when we are giving five to six stimuli okay in such a way that each falling in relaxation period of previous contraction means we are giving 5 to 6 stimuli and this each six stimuli means first stimuli second third fourth fifth each stimuli are given in such a way that it falls in relaxation period of previous stimuli right so what result which we get is height of subsequent contraction is more as compared to previous one so this is staircase phenomena you will understand this by picture see we have given 5 to 6 stimuli okay so result which we are getting is slowly this height of this is increasing right see this height this 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 so slowly height is increasing so this is nothing but staircase phenomena or trepe right but this phenomena you will get to see when whenever the stimulus which you are applying is given in such a way that it falls in relaxation period of previous stimulus and why we are getting this is because of beneficial effect this is also taught to you what is beneficial effect basically it is because the presence of calcium in because of the previous stimulus right so that is why this height is slowly getting increasing by each stim stimulus right so this is staircase phenomena now let's see next property that is summation of stimuli so what is this in this when we are giving a 10 to 20 stimuli okay 10 to 20 stimuli in such a way that uh gap between two stimuli is half to 1 second okay it is only half to 1 second in that way when we are giving 10 to 20 stimuli to the quiescent heart okay the response is achieved by summation okay so if the so that is what i have written here you see if the strength of single stimulus is reduced to sub threshold just falling to induce a response means 
the stimulus as i said 10 to 20 stimuli we are giving but the strength of this 10 to 20 stimuli is sub threshold that is below threshold level okay just following to induce responses sub threshold stimuli okay so uh, repeatability of the stimulus several time produces ventricular contraction okay so this is because of summation of stimuli that is what i explained 10 to 20 stimuli with the interval of how half to one second we are giving and the strength of stimuli is sub threshold stimuli and the result which you will get is ventricular contraction because of summation of stimuli okay you can see here so this is single stimulus of sub minimal means sub threshold right but you did not get any response see no response you are getting but when we are giving multiple stimuli this is multiple stimuli see you can see multiple arrows right so multiple stimuli of sub threshold intensity when we give you get a response because of summation of stimuli okay now this is a property extra systole with compensatory pause so now this this property can be studied in beating heart okay so heart is pumping right so what uh, we do in this is as the name suggests extra systole means we are getting extra contraction of heart okay and then there is a pause okay so that is why there is extra systole with compensatory pause now what happens in this is here the heart is normally beating right in between right uh, when the heart is normally beating artificially we are giving a stimulus to the heart single stimulus one stimulus we are giving to the heart when it is normally beating okay so when we are giving a stimulus the heart produces extra contraction now the stimulus which we are giving is during relative refractory period as i said in uh, previous slide right in while explaining long refractory period i showed you the picture where it was absolute refractory period and relative refractory period so here to study this property extra systole with compensatory pause the stimulus which we are giving is in relative refractory period or diastole phase of heart okay because if you give in other phases right the heart will not give response because i already explained it has long refractory period and that is absolute refractory period is of 250 millisecond so during that time heart is not responding right so we are giving a stimulus during relaxation phase or relative refractory period or diastole right so what happens the heart will give extra contraction and that extra contraction is nothing but extra systole see here normal cardiogram normally heart is beating now what you got you gave a stimulus here during relative refractory period it gives extra systole right now what happens is when this extra systole is occurring extra contraction during that time the natural impulse comes from sinus venosis okay from the pacemaker the natural impulse is coming but that impulse which is coming is falling in absolute refractory period of this extra systole what happened we gave artificially stimulus right so definitely heart is contracting so that time also absolute refractory period will come so the natural impulse which is coming is falling in this absolute refractory period of this extra system and that is why heart will not respond so what happens now heart has to wait till the natural impulse which comes again and that is why there is compensatory pause so that is what i have shown compensatory pause okay so this is the property of heart extra systole with compensatory pause so what i have written here in beating heart after few normal beats so this is beating heart after few normal beats okay stimulus which is applied during relaxation period of natural contraction produces an extra contraction so stimulus which is applied so what we did this is normally beating heart and we are giving stimulus here this is relaxation phase so before there is end of relaxation phase only we gave stimulus right during diastole or during relative refractory period so what happened extra contraction so this is known as extra systole and then it is followed by long pause before the next natural contraction starts so this is pause that is compensatory pause okay
थैंक यू